we'll go ahead and get going on this little, we're gonna pretend like I'm interviewing him. We'll make it as. So it's normal, this is. Yeah, he asking. says I Lots ask a lot of questions. It's good. Oh, somebody's saying you have an awesome beard. Thank you. Yes, this is beard. It's not like Josh's beard, it's beard. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we just, you know, it's, it's an interesting time. And as parents, and especially if you have young children, um, it's hard to know really how to communicate with them in a way that doesn't cause more panic or fear um, than what's already happening. And so we just thought it would be an important conversation. Maybe I told Josh like if he could think of like his top three suggestions on how we can communicate with our children um, in this particular time and in other times, you know, in life, hard things can happen. Um, and then also it's what he will say is also pertains to how we should communicate with each other. So with that, um, Josh, what would you say is one, one, the first thing that comes in your mind when you're thinking about how parents should communicate with their children, what would you share? Well, for one, understanding that it's not just words that communicate certain thoughts or feelings, right? It's, it's how we act, it's our behavior, it's our facial expressions. And so to understand that, that kids are watching us and as adults, we have to be you know, we're kind of like the front line where we have to protect them from things that, that don't make sense and maybe aren't true. But that means we have to communicate effectively, right? And so it's important that during the time when there's so much uncertainty that they don't, our kids don't necessarily need to hear everything that we're worried about, right? So we're worried about layoffs and, and like the financial burdens this might have and, and, and jobs. And so they don't need to worry about that, right? Because they don't have to experience that. So what we talk about in front of our kids is, is really important. Uh, a perfect example of this is um, my son. Um, I think he was maybe fifth grade, 10 years old, and he wanted to play a sport. But as we were riding and talking about it, he said, I want to do this, but I can't. And I was like, well, how come? He's like, because it's, it's expensive, it costs money. I'm like, what do you mean, but that's fine, we can do it. He's like, nah, you and mom said we're broke. <laughs> and so, like, I just had this realization that, you know, from time to time we'll converse and say, hey, don't spend anything in the account, we're broke this week. That doesn't mean we don't have food and shelter and even money to do entertainment stuff, but um, to my son, what he heard is we're broke. So I thought about this, it's like, how, how long is this little 10-year-old boy, because we said it our whole life right like that's something we've always said hey we're broke this week don't and yeah. so i just wonder how much stress he had about the fact that we're broke like even as a, at a young age and so it was just this realization that we have to really watch what we talk about in front of our kids and yeah. it's okay to discuss those things but make sure as adults that we do that you know in behind closed doors and and those type of bigger conversations aren't had in front of the kids um, and if you think they're not listening, you're wrong. They are. If yeah. they're sitting at their table having a snack, I don't care the, whether they're two yeah, or they're ten. Oops, sorry. <laughs> two or ten, they are hearing us in the living room talk and, and the, our tone of voice. And they're hearing that and they yeah. will pick up on that. So just be really careful what we talk about in front of them. And wouldn't you add to that being very careful about our media that we're watching? Absolutely. Like we might be sitting there on our phone yeah. listening to something and we're like sh sh we're listening to something and we think they're playing but they're hearing those things yeah. so so really being careful and mindful about our own conversation yeah. about what we are listening to what we're playing in the house all of that um and so anyway yeah. that's that's i we both kind of talked about that and agreed that that is really number number one yeah. I mean, you don't have to agree that it's number one, but in our in our minds, that is so, so important. So what's another thing that you would say? So in order to communicate well with your kids, you have to communicate with your kids. You have to carve out time to actually talk to them. Um, 
and, and that means, it can mean a different, a, a couple of different things. It can mean you have like a family council and where you discuss like, let's talk about how everyone is feeling, what's going on, um, what are some of the things they're most worried about. And, and sometimes that can be done in a, in a family group, but some of each, each of our children are different and they respond differently, right? So maybe a group setting isn't the best place. Maybe it would be better to take my oldest into a room and just say, hey bud, let's talk about what's going on. Like, I can tell you're really like on edge, like kind of tell me what you're feeling. And so yeah. you have to communicate. If you don't, like we hear all the time, if you don't talk to them about it, someone else will, right? And so we want to be the people sharing the information. Um, yeah. And, and they are feeling something. Um, and from my own experience, Amy, our eldest, would handle this situation way different. She needs a plan. She needs to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, what's happening. Like, there's toilet paper. Where, do we have enough? You know, she yeah. needs to know those things. Let me where, count the rolls. Yeah, where Emma and Evan are, you know, they're different. They wouldn't yeah. need that. They would each need something different. So, um, right. just being aware. But if you need, if communicating effectively means communicating, carving out some time. Right. And the thing we also were thinking about, and this is also a really good time. And I know for those that come to my trainings or go to cafes, I, this is the guy that I talk about a lot. This is Josh. Um, but he, you know, he's taught me a lot. And one of the things he talks about is, um, where well, are you going to use this as your third thing? Emotional vocabulary. Yeah. Okay. So his third thing, <laughs> but, um, you go ahead and say what you were going to say about emotional vocabulary and then I'll add to it. How's that? So, it's important that we understand also that as adults, we our emotional vocabulary is more developed, right? So, so kids, young kids, especially, they're sad, mad, scared, or happy, right? And those are the four emotions they feel. Even though they might feel some other emotions, they don't have the words, the vocabulary to say it. So it's important that we understand how we feel emotionally, like we have to be emotionally intelligent and and recognize wow i'm really nervous today which means i might not be the best at communicating right now so maybe i need to step back or i'm, I'm on edge so you have to know where you are emotionally but kids also they have to understand these emotions and these feelings and that it's not just these four basic emotions so we have to help them understand like the emotional vocabulary right and so yeah. there's lots of ways to do this um if you go to Pinterest and type in emotional will or feelings will, it'll have just hundreds of words that, that are variations of happy, sad, mad, and scared. Yeah. Um, because oftentimes a child might be acting angry, but the situation doesn't make sense for anger to be the emotion. Well, it's because they don't know how to, how to express fear in a way that doesn't come out as anger. So all of a sudden we're addressing anger that's really not what they're feeling though. They're feeling, feeling uncertain or fearful. And how we address that emotion is gonna be way different than how we uh, address anger. And so we have to give them that time to talk. And, and the best way to do that is just questions, tons of questions like, mom, I'm really scared. Okay, tell me about that. Like, what are you most scared of? Or what have, what have you been hearing that, that causes fear? Yeah. And let them explain, because sometimes it's not, they're not, fearful about anything out there, but they're fearful about how we're responding to it, or um, they've heard uh, information that was wrong, or they un interpreted it wrong. And so yeah. it's just about, okay, maybe this isn't the emotion you're feeling. Um, but it's not always like, oh, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. It's like, no, you validate right. and say, I can understand why you might be feeling like that. Yeah. Talk to me more about it. Like when you're, when you're feeling scared, where do you feel that in your body? Do you feel it in your heart? Do you feel it in your legs? Do you feel it in your shoulders? And then, you know, they can explain that. And then, um, you know, and then you just go from there. But lots, yeah. lots of questions. And I heard something the other day that said, you know, even by just being able to label our feeling, we feel like 5% better. <laughs> just oh, yeah. being able to say, okay, I'm not angry right now, but I'm really scared. And, and that brings about in children behaviors that, sometimes are not pleasurable, but, um, just being able to label that feeling. And so we have to help, help our kids label those feelings. So we, we see it tons in like people with trauma. When I'm seeing an adult who has had trauma when they're young, 
and they're expressing this feeling and, and the trauma may have happened when they were four or five years old but at that time they, they don't know the the emotion of feeling helpless or hopeless right so they're mad and or they're scared all the time um, and so as we're talking about what happened we we start identifying the feelings and sometimes they're like that's what I felt I felt helpless like that's I'm not mad I just felt helpless and betrayed and then all of a sudden like just having a vocabulary word it's like this it defines it something, like that's, something that's inside of you mm -hmm. um, so so language is so important in identifying that because we're happy because there's the word happy. Like, if there wasn't the word happy, how would we describe that feeling? Like, just think for a second. How would I describe the feeling of happy? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, some people say content. Some people say, but, but it's it's a word that that labels and and helps other people understand how we are feeling. Right? Yeah. So that word is extremely important. Vocabulary is. Paramount in so I would say to summarize what we talked about is that honestly that most of what we should really focus on as the adults in the lives of children is communication is first of all make sure we're being careful of what we're communicating whether it's by our what we're saying or our actions second make sure you are communicating with your children Talk to your children, ask them questions, help them understand what they're feeling, validate their feelings, and let them let them know like you're there to listen. And like Josh said earlier, we can't necessarily be like everything's going to be great and everything's going to be perfect and we're it because you know it, it may take a while for everything to be great and perfect. But um, anyway, yeah. that's that's the top three today. Um, I hope that you had some takeaways. Does anyone have any questions? Any Anything that you would love to know a little bit more about? We thought about the fact that we could do some more videos next week. Josh has some great tips on um, working with, like some tips for some tools for dealing with anxiety um, or stress. And so we will probably share those next week. Um, and just anything else. I see that we have people on here. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Sandra. And Elizabeth. We're excited you're all on here. So, I don't see... I'm, it's a little bit delayed sometimes on the live. But, um, thank you for giving us some time to share that with you. Yeah. We know we like to talk about feelings around here. Yeah, we do. Um, and I know personally, I've had a couple of days where I've felt very down and a little bit frustrated. Um, and so Jamie did ask a question. How can we support the early educators who are scared about losing their jobs? Hmm. Um, no clue. <laughs> You're not Other supposed than... to say that. You're supposed to have all the answers. <laughs> Other than just that and support them and allow them to talk and um, yeah. allow them to, to say, God, this is what I'm worried about and, and just validate it. Those are valid concerns. Like, um, because a lot of times when we feel something, we're like, I shouldn't, I should, this is dumb. I feel this way. Yeah. I, I should can't. be grateful for everything yeah, I have. No, and no, I, it's and... totally okay to feel Yeah, like just because if you spend, you need time dealing with that emotion. If you then add, this is stupid that I feel this way, then you've, you're wasting emotional time and energy feeling dumb, right? Which doesn't allow you to actually deal with the real emotion, like fear, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and yeah. so just allowing them to talk and to, to express um, how they're feeling, uh, that's the best way we can support them. Yeah. Um, it's tough. Yeah. And definitely think that that is key that we know it's, it's valuable to have someone who will just sit and listen to you and, and validate your concerns and and not try to fix it because who knows how we can fix things but just be there yeah. for you. Yep. Um, so continue to write your questions. Josh and I can hop on and talk some more next week. And um, we hope that as this first week of this interesting twist in life right now um, is happening that you've 
made it through and uh, and you know we'll all stick together here and share what we can so have a wonderful weekend yes Emma process your feelings first yes. You got to pay attention to what's happening here so that you can be ready to help everyone else. So, yeah, because it's a good, because sometimes each other, as well as kids, sometimes we don't realize how stressed we are. And so we'll act in a certain way. And it's important that we love each other and say, hey, hey, let me handle this one. And mm -hmm. like, I, I'm feeling, or to recognize, hey, I'm feeling emotionally charged. Like, I can't deal with this right now. So, yeah, that's where we, we support each other. Um, yeah, I mean, just the other night, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta handle Evan because I'm feeling a little bit too much. Like I might get too frustrated, so yeah. he took over. Because we have a set, uh, our last one at home is 17 year old boy who's an awesome, yeah, awesome teenager. But still, you know, you gotta manage. But. Yeah. Okay, you guys, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. See Continue you to ask us questions. Feel free, and we'll we'll check back in.